Merhaba, iyi akşamlar. Hello everybody, good evening. My name is Namin Molloğlu. I am the general coordinator of the ITF festival. The weather is beautiful and the lockdown is in fact slowing down. And thank you very much that you are joining us with the literature festival this year. The festival is held only digitally and we will start with the Norwegian literature. This is the 13th year of ETF. And since the first year, it was only always very close to the world's literature. Almost every second book printed in the uh, in Turkey is translated. But translations from uh, the mother tongue are the priority. But we are also very eager to introduce also other languages. More than uh, 500 authors of about 50 countries have been hosted here. We almost never had uh, books translated from Norwegian, but today we have lots of books from Norway, uh, Norway and lots of translations from the bestsellers list. The subject of this year, the motto of this year's festival is literature above the clouds, just like the Clouds don't have any borders, any limits. They are traveling around the world. So a literature is traveling, literature is traveling around the world. So thanks to our translators, literature is transferred from language to another. And with the support of these translators, the world has an opportunity to read the books of all countries. And Viglas Hurt from Norway is our guest today. Before we start, before we started, I tried to pronounce in two Norwegian words I know, but I was not successful. We like to try other words in other languages. And we want to share which books we read from other countries and from this country especially. Vignes Hurt uh, tonight will be talking to Sarda Karanda Kapujolo. Sarda, thank you very much for joining us. And now I will leave the floor to you. It will take about one hour. During the last minutes, I will join you again. If you should have any questions from the audition, I will share the questions with you. I'm very much excited. In fact, I have also questions. Sarda, I leave the microphone to you, but in a while I will join you. I will be waiting excitedly. Thank you very much in advance. Thank you a lot. Hello, Victis. Very nice to see you again. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's a beautiful novel. We really loved it. We love to read it. Thank you very much. I did not expected and uh, many people around me read it and after I got the assignment from ITF I built a group around myself we discussed this book and they really were very excited to read it it made, makes me very happy to be with you here online and while I was reading the book I was really excited and I have lots of questions I want to ask you in fact I will start with the first question. Will and Testament is uh, in fact a exposure and a confession and mentally and emotionally we are confronted with this book but it's something very interesting. You are not manipulating the reader to be on one side or the other and you are showing us the little parts even in this book and we are really participating in the conscious in this book and I like very much what you were trying to do were you on one party or on the other side while you were writing this book uh, I tried to to understand all of the characters and to understand that the situation is difficult for all of them but of course, I'm closest to Berglott. Mm -hmm. Berglott is the voice of uh, the novel. And, and 
And the one she I identify with, I, mm-hmm. I must be honest and say that. But of course, when we have lived for a long time, we understand that um, all problems, if it's in society or in family, often have two or several parts and they all have their kind of pain. So to be realistic, I have to, you know, tell about that the situation is difficult for everybody. The the, the subject, uh, the fiction, the content was very interesting. It was polyphonic, it was uh, transparent, it was democratic, uh, everything at the same time. How did you get uh, yourself ready to prepare such a story? Oh, what did you do during the preparation uh, term? All the characters, their pri- private lives, their business lives, their psychiatric uh, sessions and everything. Can you talk about that also, please? I'm very curious also as an editor. Yes, I can be honest and tell you that I have an experience that are similar to, or kind of similar to, to Berglott's um, 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 dilemma or, or a problem. Um, and I have been writing about this theme in one way or the other in several books. But, um, but at once, uh, six years ago, I, I, I told myself, no, I have to write about this. Not only mention it, you know, in, in one sentence, or I have to write about this situation in the family. And that should be the main um, theme of, of a novel. So I just started. Maybe because of this reason, we could really feel with the book. That's what I'm feeling right now. I don't know if you know or heard about him. Halaju Mansour said, uh, hell is not a place where we have pain. Hell is a place where we are in pain and nobody knows about it. Everybody is in its own hell, uh, not being understood, just being overlooked. And, uh, and he is exposed to guns lighting by his family. Sometimes if she finds herself opposing, she's asking herself, and in this dilemma, she's saying, this touched my heart very much. What kind of a person was I, in fact? And this is one of the sentences which uh, touched my heart in the novel. So what kind of people are we, in fact? We are, we are accepting ourselves and we are denying ourselves. What is your opinion on that? I think it's a difficult existential problem or, or question, of course, but of course, we often do things we know that will hurt other people. Still, we do them and still we feel forced to do them. We do things that we know will destroy other people, but we do it because if we don't, we will be destroyed ourselves. Uh, so we often do things we know that had bad consequences consequences, but you feel you don't have an alternative. And for Berglet, uh, to survive, she has to break with her family. She can't survive if she should behave as normal with them and go to dinners and go to holidays as if nothing has happened. It's impossible for her. So she feels she's forced to break with them, even though she know it will be hard for them. Uh, 
hikaye hikayenizde e, Abram'ın için bir gösterisinden ilham aldığınızı. In your book you say that you said that uh, you were inspired by Abram Movich. And in this story she does not move for six hours and she is offering a performance where the people can use everything, even guns on her. And after a certain time, the audience are using the tools and they uh, hurt her, they harass her uh, in many ways and they do some things. And at the end of everything, after the performance, and after she gets up, after these hours, when she was asked, she said they could not uh, stand what they were doing to me. They were hating themselves because of what they were doing to me. And I, and you said that you find it similar to the situation. I found this very interesting because we expect that the characters are changing during the novel and that the history, that the story will go to another place, that everything will be okay. But in Will and Testament, the characters do not change. Everybody remains the person they were. Did you do that on purpose? Yes, but I think that the main character, Bergdorf, she, she is changing during the novel. In the beginning, is a kind of crying child. And then she goes to psychoanalysis mm -hmm. and break with her family and you must be strong to 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 manage to do that and then at one point she gets angry with her mother screams to her mother and she is trying to change her attitude as a victim to a warrior and in the end she is a kind of resigned I think so. But maybe the other characters don't change that much. But they are in a very, very difficult mm -hmm. situation. If it are very concrete, if you imagine. There is a grown-up daughter telling the family, father did that and that to me when I was a child. The father says, no, mm -hmm. I never did looking at the rest of the family, do you think I can, could have done such things? And we must, and there's no evidence, and we must understand how tempting it is to believe in the father. Because if they choose to believe in mm -hmm. the sister, it opens a big, dark, impossible hole can they celebrate Father's birthday next week? Can they celebrate Christmas? Should they tell the rest of the family about the situation, the neighborhood? It's impossible. But if they choose to believe in the Father, everything can go on as before. Maybe they risk to lose their sister, but that's... Um, minor problem um, compared with the loss if they believe uh, believe in in their in their sister uh, so you can look upon uh, the mother and the sisters that choose they when they cho what they choose to believe in the father as an attempt to save the family in one way or the other so it's very very difficult and you know this center for incest in oslo they has uh, you know they tell uh, told the newspaper that 99.9 percent .9 of the people that confront front that family with that kind of um with that kind of stories they are denied from the families Çok ilgimi çekti e, bu son söylediği şey. E, Türkiye'de bir e, laf var. Deriz ki ne seninle ne In Türkiye. 
we have a saying it says with or without you the story in will and testament everybody seems to be apart from each other but they're still a family and this is what is makes a family um, i have read many novels recently in the original language or maybe in translated languages i have observed that the subject family is mentioned very often what do you think will we be apart from the family in the sense we know it i tried and i, I really started asking myself what did you say about the family will uh, continue to be as uh, important as it is said been until now is that the question yes i could observe that in the recent time this subject is mentioned in lots of books is it possible that the family throne is shaking ah uh, yes i i think so in one way in one way and especially in the northern countries you have you know you have now two mothers instead of mother and the father you can have two fathers you are always have a, a a law that is going to be discussed now if you can have um biological parents and um the parents through the daily life parents all that kind of things but still i think that um, the 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 uh, babies um let's call them primary uh, caretaking persons will always be very very attached to to the children the children and the primary care caretaking persons and these uh bond are also very ambivalent because we are ambivalent to the things that we are depending on so i think that a strong strong bond be between siblings and mothers and fathers or um, and children will be strong ambivalent painful and joyful and necessary because i think the family structure is so deeply in the human psyche so i i think we it's, it, it takes years to really change it we can change it on the surface but not on the deep i don't think so. it's difficult uh, <laughs> difficult i think in uh, Phil and Testament two points caught my attention one uh, it was very poetic and wonderful expressions and the second was the psychological analysis we have read very strong sentences since uh, this book is the first one translated into Turkish I have no other com uh, books to compare unfortunately but is this the typical Witkis style or is there something something special to will and testament no i think it's a it's a typical Witkis. Uh, i think my writing voice the novel's voice is very typical me so my readers will recognize that kind of voice but of course i've been a writer for 40 years so i hope really mm -hmm. i have developed and that i write and think better than i did 20 years ago of course so i i hope i have developed but still it's not it's my way of writing yes i think so i hope also your other books will be translated into turkish so we can read those after the first 30 pages of the novel i was very excited because I could observe how freely you were writing without any specific form. It was chaotic, uncontrolled. And the style makes it uh, easy to understand uh, the, the feeling of Bragliot. That made, it created a pleasant effect because sometimes as a reader, if we are reading a book we like to think about the author 
was it planned the chaotic form in the fiction or did i understand it in a chaotic way <laughs> no i think so it's i write rather intuitive so i have this subject i want to explore then then you know i i i it's so hard to find the voice that i should use to explore this special subject or question existential questions but when i find the voice it's coming on it's just going and going and it i find my way and i just drive on so but i think i'm very intuitive writer and it was very beautiful in fact and at one point in the book you say that it is more enjoyable to write a book than to publish one i really like the sentence because i do share the same opinion how do you feel what is the opinion of it or is this a uh, only a uh, point of view or do you only made this sentence up in the book is it more interesting and enjoyable to write them to publish it it's much more fun to write it Th that's the enjoyable the enjoyable part it's to write it and i i have a nice time when i write the other things to publish that's the kind of more tiring works but still of course it's nice to have readers but it's to write. And I think that I always feel relieved and remedied when I have written a novel. And I don't know why it's like that, because it's not that writing is therapy for the writer, because then a writer and I would be healthy and we are not healthy. But still, it, you know, to, see, to find the right words for difficulties, it's always a kind of you feel you, you feel good by doing that. So yes, to me, to me, uh, it's a kind of I think writing is a kind of survival. But as I mentioned, I'm not healthy. It's not therapy. Then I would be healthy. I'm not, and because I'm not, I can write more novels. <laughs> I guess. This is very interesting, your way of explanation. And what do you think? Which of features do you think comes forward? Discrimination of children, uh, false realities, psychological analysis, incest, domestic cold war, emotional or mental violence, which is the most forward coming point i think it's um i think it is that they are woven together and that's they are dependent on each other that you can't point out one thing it's woven and maybe that's something to do with that chaotic feeling you have because it's so many questions at the same time so many dilemmas at the same time but you know they are woven together you can't um, write about the one and not uh, touching the others so it's a kind of code chaotic text because life are chaotic and our experiences mm. are chaotic and our past is chaotic and the future can't imagine <laughs> mention <laughs> you also i hope the future will be good <laughs> yes I don't know if you know, we have a sentence in the Quran, a hadith in the Quran. It says, I was a secret treasury. I wanted to be known. And here I can observe Bagliot wants to be known. And at the other hand, uh, George Orwell said, maybe the human being wants to be understood rather than loved. My question here would be, what is endurable to go through something terrible 
or if people don't want to see if people ignore what you have been through what is more difficult? i think i think it's very painful if you are ignored and people don't want to understand of course i think that love is very essential especially for a little child um as we told about when we talked about the family it's very it's everybody needs love but from parents from these primary caretaking persons but we don't need to be loved by everybody but our needing of being understood of our teacher of a friend it's very very important and especially we, when you have experienced trauma if nobody want to understand to listen you will feel so lonely maybe you will get confused start to ask yourself what if you have experienced what you you mean to have experienced so you will feel very alone rejected and it will be even more painful the trauma with because if you talk about it the pain is less i think so it's 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 one way of make the pain uh, don't you don't use a small word to, to feel less pain when you talk about because you treat the pain when you talk about it when you write about it when you share it so i think about it in the in the refugee crisis that we have that the refugees can't hope to be loved but to and to be understood and that we should listen to them that's very very important i think i have a very personal question i have looked through it but i could not find it at the towards of the end of the book you're talking about the sea of oblivion or sea of forgetting is it some phrase some metaphor i don't really understand no, what what does it mean yeah please it, explain yeah it's from the bible i think it's uh, it says something like when that first of all you should mm -hmm. uh, forgive your enemies but if you cannot forgive them you should throw your pain and what the, uh, the evil uh, which had been done to you over your shoulder into the sea of forgetfulness to get rid of the pain and the evil that others have done to you so it's a kind of i'm as i often do i vrir och vänder på um, i'm you know using these sentences making them my own in a way but i think that uh, the 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 people that you um, have read the, their bible they will um, recognize that sentence about the the we are we were talking mm -hmm. about to we are forgetness that uh, and to get rid of to be relieved and so it says that you should it's it's very easy to say it's like everything in in the bible this it's so easy to say it's not easy to live <laughs> to live <laughs> by that advices um so but but it's 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 a, it, it's a thought in a way if if that's possible or not uh intellectual akrabala inanın do you believe in intellectual kind uh, relative relativeness or kindness and i do there is a fellowship maybe by this means i think there are also readers among us the norwegian uh, sorry is touching the hearts of turkish people uh, and it is touching their own cultural values and it is it causes empathetic feelings also here in literature some people ask why does literature exist 
maybe just because of this reason and and I'm very happy that you introduced us to Vagliot and their family. And my question would be, what are you trying to do? Or what do we want to do with literature, with the support of literature? Oh, uh, you know, to me, literature is so important. It's so, as I said, I've, I've survived by reading and writing. And I totally agree with what you are saying. And, you know, I have given up men. When I want to meet wise men, <laughs> I go to the library and I read Freud and Søren Kierkegaard and Sartre oh. and Bertolt Brecht. And then I feel my heart is filled with love. So, you know, it's a book for everybody. And the, uh, this big library where you can find books to get in love with. So we don't meet people to have deeply changing experiences. Everybody who read the book uh, mentioned that it is poetic. Do you have poets also besides your novels? You can see some little uh, poetic lines but no no did you I, also write poems no i don't i have too much respect for the poets to to try to do that <laughs> <laughs> my my very favorite um poem is the and a poet is the communist battle breast not because he was a communist because he has so lovely sentences you know after he had experienced the first world war and he could see that Hitler was coming into power. He could observe Hitler was taking contact with Stalin. Then he writes these two sentences. The government's right peacement, um, peacement agreement, L little man write your testament it's only two sentences but they are so so good so um and yeah his his is fabulous i can't you know talk about him because i don't know the exactly the, the words but he's my favorite um poet uh, so so he also in a little poem in four lines he can say that i'm sitting by the uh, by the road watching that the chauffeur is um, sh changing a wheel i didn't like where i come from i don't like where i'm going why am i looking at this wheel shift by impa uh, in, impatient and so he's he's but i can't uh, i can't phrase him because he's too brilliant and i'm just a stupid uh, fan <laughs> she said this stuff for love which as a phrase uh, to because you said i'm stupid i cannot rephrase his words we were just saying you can do it of, of course in psychology in in philosophy we can observe that you are also interested in these subjects. What else do you do? What else do you read? This is another question. I also like innovation for ourselves. Do you have any innovations, any new uh, lines, any new things you follow so you can make maybe inspire us? Uh, as I um, uh, um, uh, read, uh, read uh, writers, you know, uh, writers, yeah, but it's so. You know, I have some read, uh, some writers I like to read when I am inspired and I want to be angry. <laughs> the the one that are so angry, <laughs> like um, uh, Thomas Bernard from Austria. He's so angry. He's angry all the time, and that's inspiring. Other in other situation, I want to 
uh, have new thoughts, then I can read Hatta Möller uh, from uh, Romania. And I can, if I want to remember my childhood, I can read Tove Ditlesen from Denmark. If I want to um, uh, think, if I have that, oh, it's my telephone. If I have the necessity to, to think of, to have, to um, get myself down, I can read Prost because I'll get so impressed that I know I can never write like that. But I, my favorite Norwegian writer is, is Dag Solstad. I don't know if he, he is translated into Turkey, but um, he has followed me all my writing life. It was just, forget his phone, yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, you say that. This, this is so I have forgotten. I shall go and take it on. <laughs> So, okay. Oh, it's this new times, you know, <laughs> Corona times, Corona meetings. <laughs> Hiç sorun değil. Ee, ben de doğrusu e, eşimi ve çocukları evin e, diğer tarafına... Uh, to tell you the truth, my husband and my children are in the uh, other part of the house. I uh, literally locked the door and and I think that we manage very well. How do you feel so far? I'm feeling... I'm. I, it's so nice to talk to you and you are so patient with my bad English. And you know, when, as a writer <laughs> and as a talker, I'm so used to find the, exactly the right words, but I don't can I don't I can't in English, but that's also a, an experience. That is, I, I need I need an experience to hide for the, no, not to hide to to seek the words, and that's. That's a, a nice and thoughtful experience for me, because a lot of people um, must do, they seek after the words all the time. But a writer and a speaker like me, we can <laughs> and that can be a problem. So it's nice to, to yeah, to seek the words. Uh, but Bence, how can you tell us? Okay, welcome, Nermin. Sada, our team has a group, and everybody really is in inspired by Vitkis. We hope we would be together and we could have a dinner after the meeting. Vitkis, what do you think? One dinner in Istanbul, along some restaurant along the Bosporus, wouldn't you love it? I would. Love it. You know, I've been in Istanbul and I have written a novel which is not that different from uh, Will and Testament. And, you know, we, I was together with a man for many years, but it was a destructive love and a very dramatic love affair. And we were, when we were to different, uh, different restaurants in Istanbul by the, the sea, and rivers, then we said to the restaurant that we were getting to, uh, that we had married the same day. And they were, you know, serving us as we were uh, a new married co couple. And so we had eaten in all the best restaurants as a new married couple in Istanbul. It was a very nice experience. But when we <laughs> reached Norway, we broke up. <laughs> Thank you. <Yes. laughs> Thank you. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> really, we should meet again in, in Istanbul. I have two questions, in fact. Seda has prepared lots of nice questions. And you have maybe activities also in other countries. Your books were translated in Italian and Nor in Dutch. Do they have questions based on the country, especially incest subjects or the family problem subjects. Do, the, do these questions change according to the country? Yes, they do. They, yes, they do. 
And it's very interesting that the Catholic countries, they are much more, uh, um, what you call it, it's the, 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 it seems to me that the trouble in the family is thrown under the closet. They don't talk so openly about him. So I have letters from people living in Catholic countries like Italy and, and France and Spain, and they are, they are much um, writing about that they don't know who, who they should go to with the problems because there is a shh culture. I don't know if that's right, but um, if I should, uh, that's uh, what the letters I get uh, are about. My second question is about social media. Right now we are holding a digital festival, which is only digital. How, what, how do you deal with social media? I'm not. I do these kind of things, but I'm not on Facebook, for example. No, not at all. So, so it's a lot of things. I don't know about that medium, but it's also that I can see uh, with my, uh, I can see with my, uh, my friends and it takes a lot of time to be there. And that is, it's, I, I don't know about it. So I'm not the, the, the woman to talk about it, but it seems to me like it's a kind of you, that you are getting dependent on, on, on the news, on the likes and all that kind. So you'll go there all the time to, to see, to look. So I don't, I don't know what's going on out there. And when Will and Testament was published in Norway, it was a huge debate in the newspaper, but also on the Facebook. But I don't know what was written there. And when I told people that I didn't know, they said, oh, that's very smart, Vigdis. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> very smart but don't you miss things like in Turkey we have an uh, internet newspaper for example one of the best authors said she wrote beautiful things about your novel wouldn't you be happy to know about these uh, articles for example yes but my editor my editor Oh. In my publishing house, they are on all platforms and they are sending me everything. So I know exactly what I need to know and the things that are nice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We are very It's very nice, but I want to read a question. Before we finish, I would like to tell you that our next meeting with you and please promise us that we will in Istanbul in a restaurant. Now the question is coming. There may be different kinds of traumas in the family, psychology, violence included. Does, uh, does, it have, does some person has to be supported by psychoanalysis if he wants to break up with the family? Uh, it, it depends. Somebody can make it them by themselves. Somebody need helps, but you know, the psychoanalysts shall never tell you what to do. Can just, just, you know, um, get together with you on a difficult road and give you maybe some advice, but you have to deal with the things yourself, but you can be supported. And in the novel, the Testament, uh, Baradoc is supported by Clara. But the uh, psychoanalysis or to, to go to a um, psychiatrist can help you to understand yourself better. Also can help you to deal with the pain and the feeling of guiltiness, for example, or also to understand the other family members to understand the situation. So I myself have been 
I've been to Sakan psychoanalysis for several years. And to me, it was like coming from a dark corner when I didn't know how to act at all, to, uh, to come out in the open, to see um, possibilities and other ways. So, and nobody told me to go that way or that way, but it was a kind of <gasps> like a sh uh, what you, um, when it's, it's after a rainy day, you know, it's suddenly a blue, blue sky and you can look around you and see where you are. Uh, Very interesting. Another question is about theater. What do you think about theater? Do you like it? Do you work there? Yes, I like it a lot. Uh, I like it a lot. It depends, of course, but um, I like it and, you know, Ibsen, Henrik Ibsen, uh, it's um, the, no, the biggest playwright in, in Norway. He's a very wise man. So when I go to the library and I don't read Freud or Schittgegaard, I can read Ibsen. And he has teach me a lot about um, the family because his realistic plays, most of them are about family problems. And he's so smart and he shows it, uh, shows the problems in a very clear way that you suddenly understand, oh, oh yes, it's like that. And then he has, he, his characters are speaking in a very clearly uh, way. So it's so easy to, to, to refer to, to, to Ibsen and to his characters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sarda, do you have other questions? In fact, I have another question which I have just overlooked. Uh, I am very much interested in your sentences, maybe also as an editor. She has very nice inventions. One of it is that Wittges is going with, with Clara's friends and she calls, in a phrase, she calls these people are falling from life and fell in love with his expressions. How do you fall out of life, Wittges? Yeah, falling but, out of life. Yeah, I, I try to find that sentences in in no Norwegian in my book, but I didn't find that exactly. But maybe you mean that that uh, Clara and also um, Berglot, they have a kind of drift until the destructive witty. They both drink too much, and some sometimes people they want to live destructive because they have the feeling they can find something when they come down to the bottom. And if they, if they go to the, to the bottom, they can see a kind of new life or find something. So people are often seeking against the destructive behavior. And that's something that, and, and maybe you can find a kind of, um, what you call it in English, a kind of, <coughs> to go opposite and and power when you are when you have sunk very deeply you maybe can raise with another attitude towards the, the towards the, the family or the, the 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 people around you maybe that's i'm not sure if i i'm able to to answer your question but i i when you say fallen fallen from life, so that we often want to fall from the ordinary life. We, we, we know the feeling of falling, not the feeling of getting safe on the 
So going to school, going to work, going to feeling safe. We want a feeling of falling onto the unknown. Totally new experiences, for example. It must be something that like that. I mean, or the Turkish translator means. <laughs> I hope we understood each other very well, but it was expressed very well in uh, what the translator in the book found a very nice expression. The book was translated by a very good translator. Everybody said the same. It is beautiful in Turkish. And this is something I wanted to share with you so you can be really happy. And now the last question for Mrs. Birsar. She is, the question is, is it a dystopic story or is it a life? Is it, it's at some place, it is similar to dystopia somewhere in the book. Is there, does a book, does this dystopic book exist? I, uh, no, I didn't understand your question. Okay. Yeah. Ve şöyle, ailesinde yaşadıklarını... The, the things, the person is living in the book. Is this a dystopia? Is this a metaphoric book? Is it something the author lived through? Is it an experience? Ah. Oh, yes, that that's a tricky question, you know. <laughs> uh, I think it's... It's a kind of both. Um, the writer can have experienced something very concrete and want to write about it, but and to investigate that experience or experiences. But the way of uh, investigate, explore the experience. She writes a novel. That's the way to find out. So the novel, it's not one-to-one -one with the so-called reality. It's fiction, even though the experiences, the deep experience can be, can has happened. That it will also, it, it will also be, it will always be an, an fictive, a fiction, a fictioner and fiction and an, an investigation of the experience. So you cannot point on a person in the novel and say, oh, that is mm, in reality. And that person is mm, that in reality. It's not like that. Then I could write a biography. Yeah. And you know that uh, Karl Uwe Knausgård, our big writer, he has written about um, existing people and he's using their then real names so that people can google them and he says in interviews and, and newspapers and articles that this is true but everybody knows editors writers know that he means true for me there's not everybody has her or his own true of course and so but i think that authors have always written in that they all, all always used reality and has been in, have been inspired inspired by real really people reality Ibsen as well when he wrote his dollhouse the very important play he was inspired of a female colleague that has written false on a on a paper so but he is lifting is using this trivial detail to writing a play that it would last over centuries and I don't do that and neither do Knausgård but we, we tr use reality in different ways but what we make are fiction and writers have, have always done that use reality to make fiction and the truth is not the truth is interesting, but the truth is not the books, the novels, in the relation between the novels and, and the reality. The truth is 
how the novel is working in the, the reader. If the reader feel it's true, then it's true. It's the impact on the reader that is, um, ah, it's difficult. It's so difficult to say in, 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 in English, but it's it, how true it is. Evet, saatimize geçti. Yeah, it, it's, you know, the truth is in the reader's heart. If the reader says, this is true, then it's true. It has nothing to do with reality. <laughs> Evet, Bignes, um, özellikle... Yes, with this, Dilek Başak and Seyran Publishing House, we thank you very, very much for introducing you to us. Thank you very much for your time. Serda, thank you very much for your moderation. I hope that to, uh, to see you in the following years also. Bignes, do you want to say some last words for the Turkish readers? I would just say that I'm so happy that you read my book and I've reached some readers at all in Turkey. It was not in my mind when I was sitting here quarreling with my, my sentences. So it's a fairy tale for me. And um, I think as my moderator, it's so, it's so good that we read each other because it helps us to understand each other. Evet. Çok teşekkürler. Ben, uh, thank could... you, thank you very much. I would like to thank my team working with us and our translator Mine. And tomorrow evening at eight o'clock, we will meet with other authors, our audition, our listeners. Thank you very much. Good night. Tak witness. Tak. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. See you.